Good morning to everybody. How was day one? You know, I, I think about day one. I went into our region breakout this morning and I said, you know, for our new district managers, I want to apologize. I know we didn't give you enough information on the first day, right? And uh, obviously sarcasm. What a phenomenal first day. Can we hear it for our speakers from day one, please? How many of you feel like you could go home right now and dramatically impact your business? Right now. And that's after a few hours. Well, we've got a great day today. We've got some free time, of course, today, some social time this evening, which is a great portion of this event. And then, of course, tomorrow as well. So we have way more to give you, and I'm fired up. It was a phenomenal first day, um, but we've got more. Who's fired up about Munich, by the way? You know, I, I went to Berlin and I went to Dresden last year on the way to, to, to our trip, and uh, Germany is such a cool country, but I cannot wait to see Munich. Uh, if we can, you know, I, again, I know it was mentioned yesterday, but I would be remiss if I didn't mention it again. These trips are a privilege. They are not a right. And our owners, our presidents know that it's such a, a huge part of our culture and who we are as an organization. And, you know, they keep raising the bar. They keep raising the bar. It's absolutely phenomenal. Can we thank our presidents and our owners one more time for Munich and all of our trips? You know, in reflecting on yesterday, how did you feel when Mr. Goodman was up here and he, he, he had all the executives stand that had 13 years or more in the business? How are you feeling when, you know, it was 13 years, 18 years, 22 years, 27 years, and it wasn't eight people. I didn't count, but that was a massive, massive amount of people that were up with over 13 years. What are some of the words you felt? Just shout them out. What did you feel when you saw that? Pride, proud. What? Dedication. Those are great words. Here's what, here's what I wrote down. I wrote down proud, blown away, rare air, confident, inspired, and the biggest one I wrote down was blessed. That was cool. You know, I felt all those things and more. By the way, did you notice, I don't know if you caught this or not, I went up to Bruce and mentioned it because I was so impressed. Did you, met, did you catch that he did all those years and territories without a piece of paper? Now, of course, he would blow that off as, yeah, no big deal. That's a big deal. That was cool. That was impressive. Well, I should start off by saying my name is Jeff Bry. I'm the, the region manager in the Midwest region, and I'll be your MC to kick off the morning session. We are going to dig right in uh, to our speakers to give them the full time, but I do want to recognize one final group before I bring up our first speaker, and that's the people that went above and beyond last night, you know, with the late night tables, and the people that would take that extra time. You know, I, I, this uh, began, this concept began, I believe, back in the central zone many, 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 many years ago with, with Martin Dimitrovich, the gentleman that you saw honored a little bit last night. And I remember Marty saying to me, he said, well, here's what we're going to do. At the end of the conference, we're going to have what we call late night with an FSM. And we're going to just have tables and the top people are going to sit around these tables and they're going to be there to answer questions. And I said, Mar let me get this straight, Marty. We're going to go through a whole conference all day with, with these 18-year-olds, these 20-year-olds, these college students that learned all day, their eyes are bleeding. And then at the end, we're going to say, you have an optional set where you can learn more, optional. I said, no offense, Marty, you're the man, but no one is going to come. No one's going to show up. It's going to, or it's going to be crickets and a little embarrassing. He, and Marty's way, smiled. You know, he didn't pat me on the head, but that's probably what he was thinking. He just smiled at me and said, you're probably right, Jeff, but let's try it. And I said, okay, let's try it. I walked down to late night and there was probably, no joke, 1,200 people down at late night around tables. And uh, people want to, in Vector want to learn, and I think that's cool. I saw the, the tables full last night, but I want to recognize the, the people that did the extra work at the end of a long day, a travel day, all those different things. If you worked a table last night, could you please stand? And let's give them a huge round of applause, please. Thank you. Thank you. Well, let's dive right in. I want to give this, this first speaker the full 42 minutes or so that we have on the program for her message. 
Who wants to learn about dominating push weeks? This to me is one of the most fun messages. It's one of the most fun parts of the business. I love push weeks as an office manager and as a DVM. And we have one of the absolute all time best at dominating push weeks, our DVM from Gulf Coast, Kathy Vasquez. And uh, I wanna share just a few thoughts about Kathy before she comes up, but she's really just ideal for this message. She started selling Cutco, by the way, in the summer of 2002. Uh, since becoming a DM, listen to this number. In 2004, she became a DM. Obviously, we're 12 years out, right, from 2004. She has had $11 million years so almost every single year of her career has been a million dollars. She is one of only a handful, a very select group that's shipped over a million dollars in a summer. Of course, she's had a bunch of $800,000, $900,000 summers as well. Since 2007, by the way, she has averaged over $1.5 million out of her pilot office. Let me say it again. Since 2007, she has averaged over $1.5 million in business. You know, I asked a couple people that are close to Kathy to share some thoughts, and Lloyd Reagan, our region manager, said, my favorite quote I heard someone describe Kathy was, she is a force of nature. She knows how to roll up her sleeves and engage with people and teams like none other. She is one of the best ever at leading push weeks, and I can't wait to hear her message. Jeff Gamboa said, Kathy embraced me both as a DVM and as a friend as I moved my entire life and organization from DC Metro to South Florida. It was, it was single-handedly the hardest thing I had ever gone through up to that point in my life. I know I haven't told her this enough, so Kathy, apparently I'm telling from Jeff right now, how much that support really meant. I'll, I'll be forever grateful. He said on a business note, Kathy's powerful Sharpie organization has served as the platinum standard for the entire vector world on how to drive business, extract the most potential out of people, and create massive results within an office. When I think of Kathy, and I've known Kathy for a long time, I think of three words. I think determined, and I think rock star. Those are the three words when I think of, of Kathy Vasquez. You know, I remember her telling a story, and I've tried to repeat this, Kathy. We're going to have to sit down. You're going to have to remind me of all this because I get it wrong, I'm sure. But I remember a story, and I believe it was her million-dollar summer, her biggest summer of her career, where there were floods. I think she got kicked out of the office somewhere in June, if I'm not mistaken. And I want to say her AM chopped his thumb off or something crazy like that with a cleaver. This is a long time ago where I heard this story, but it has always resonated with me as someone that's so determined with so many obstacles that we all have various obstacles. Think of those obstacles. A flood kicked out of your office in June and uh, damaged the major, major limbs, right? And she shipped her best summer ever of a million dollars. She's moved to multiple new territories, by the way, and shipped a million dollars the first year she moved. All, every single time she moved, you know, she simply doesn't understand the word fail. And one of my favorite things about Kathy is she's passionate about giving back to the world, to everything. You know, she works tirelessly, I know, in Haiti for Angel Wings uh, on many, many fronts. She goes there herself. She donates time. She donates money. She is the co-founder of Elevate, which is a, a whole nutrition class uh, for free, by the way, that she does to give back to the world, to make the world a better place, simply. She just loves to give back, and I really admire that about Kathy. Of course, she's a Hall of Famer. She has over $35 million in career sales, seven silver cups on her resume. And to think about the, what she's talking about is dominating push weeks, right? Check this out. Think about your push week this past summer, SC2. What did you ship? Think about it in your head. 100K, man, that's pretty good. 150K, that'd be exciting, right? She has had 10 push weeks over a quarter of a million dollars. 10. And her number one best push week over $300,000. If you want to take your push week business to the next level, get your note taking ready. Talking about dominating push periods, help me bring to the stage our Hall of Fame DVM, Kathy Vasquez. Oh, yeah. I am stoked to give this message today on push periods. It's probably my most exciting talk for SLC. When I had the opportunity to speak with Trent Booth, 
he said, we'd love to hear you speak on PRs. I looked at him and I just laughed. I go, no, no, no. I said, I could do that. And I love PRs. PRs are our bread and butter. It's what my organization has been built on since 2007. But the game changer that really took the sales report to the next level was push periods. It was something that I watched from afar as I admired Mike Muriel and the Chicago division absolutely dominate years of push periods and just try to keep up and try to learn what they were doing and replicate that in my business. It is my favorite part of the job besides leadership. I, I, between Leadership Academy and push periods, I'd probably say the most fun part are push periods, but I think they're hand in hand because for me, my Leadership Academy, the people that I get to develop, that I get to grow, come from my alliances. They come from my push periods. These are the guys that I get to dig deep with. I think about pushes. I've heard managers say before like, oh, push, yeah, you gotta wake up early, you gotta work hard. And when I think about push, I get so excited because when I think about push, I think about pushing ourselves, seeing my kids push themselves out of their comfort zone, seeing them being challenged, but overcoming getting an opportunity to celebrate with them, celebrate the successes of being knocked down and being able to get right back up. I think about what they go through and the mental muscles that they develop through this period and having a chance to have a hand in that process where they're learning how to deal with rejection on another level, where they're learning the muscles of taking action when they do not feel like it. They keep moving forward when things seem like they'll never come together. They learn to have faith. They learn to work as a team. And it's incredible to watch them see them blossom before your eyes in confidence. When I think about pushes, I think about a permission to push people to their next level to level up, to really see what they're made out of. I had a chance to speak to parents at SC2, and I love this place. And I wanna say again for everyone yesterday, just phenomenal day one. I thought it was beautiful, and I know people have mentioned it, but how Bruce opened up yesterday, and not just, I love our company. I love where we are. Multiple people have asked me, like, you're doing stuff with Haiti, you're doing stuff with Elevator, are you going anywhere? I'm like, are you kidding me? I love this place. I love how we grow people. I love the opportunities that we give to young people that might have never been believed in or supported the way that we do, the way that our family here does, because Vector really is a family. I talked to parents during our SC2 breakout. We had 50 parents at SC2, and I shared with them what the heck this push was all about. I said, your kids just endured, many of them, two weeks of hell. <laughs> and, and I'm sure some of you can attest to that. And parents were like, uh-huh. Like, you saw your kids cry. You saw them complain. You saw them leave before you to work every morning. And some of the parents were all nodding their heads. I said, and could we do it later? Could we meet later in the day? Oh, yes, absolutely. But we choose not to. It's an intentional two weeks of pushing them out of their comfort zone. And I want them to do that because you know what? In life, they're gonna be pushed. Things are gonna shake their world and they need to grow the muscles to withstand that. And I have the privilege as their leader to guide them and to coach them during a roller coaster of emotions to go out, step forward, and really learn what it is to be the best version of themselves and to take the actions as if they were who they want to be. And I talked to them about what, what type of a, when you describe someone you admire, you look up to, what, what are they like? Are they a quitter? Do they sleep in all the time? Are they lazy? Do they make excuses? Do they complain? No, they find a way. They always do what's right, even when they don't feel like it. And they lead their people because of a decision they made. And that is something that I'm very passionate about teaching my young people to do and to be those type of leaders. 
And the parents, it was incredible to speak with so many of them afterwards uh, and during that event, mingle with them. And they were just blown away. And I, and I told them about what we do. And I said, pushes are a chance for your kids to literally be pushed out of their comfort zone. I said, they could complain every day. If they didn't complain to you, I did not do my job properly. I said, but in the end, they, they grow to that next level. They grow their capacity. And it is absolutely incredible. And I start off with that because I think it's so huge. We can go through the slides. I don't have a little clicker. Click. But I have three things that I, that I put everything under. And I'm going to share a lot of meat and potatoes here with you guys. But I just I, I put under three umbrellas for a manager. And I thought about when it comes to push periods, you know, what's going to create you could put it up there. The three, beautiful, thank you. Number one is mentality. And I just opened up sharing that. What is your mentality as a manager? Because I think that's most important. Are you dreading pushes coming because you have to wake up early and be at your office every day? Or are you excited? I wait, by the way, anyone who works with me knows this. Anyone who's a part of my life knows I am not a morning person. I have tried. I have tried for so many years. I want to love mornings. I want to work out every day. I made a commitment yesterday for the rest of the year, five days a week. You can text me, you can call me and hold me accountable. I'm going to wake up at 6 a.m. I'm going to the gym at 6.30 a.m. five days a week for the rest of the year. That's a commitment I made. I said, I need to stop making excuses because when it's push, I'm up. I'm up before the alarm goes off. I'm like, what time is it? Oh, it's not time for Alliance yet. Okay, I still have like 30 more minutes. And I'm like, wait, and I'm like excited to get to my office and see all those kids there waiting for me to be coached, to be inspired, to be taught, to be led. It fires me up. So why can't I do that for the rest of the year? And, and I thought that to myself. I said, I'm always there. I'm there before they are. It's the most exciting part of my year is push periods. So how do you look at it? Besides the excitement, do you understand the role push periods play? If you guys go on Vector Connect and you do a query to the top managers in our company, biggest performances annually, uh, most of the top managers, about 60% of our year is done during the summer. Some more. Some a little bit less, depending if they have like a $3 million a year, right? But about 60%. And when you look at it, it's done in the summer. And if you look at the statistics, on average, it's about half. This is an example here. Thank you for, or we don't have it here. Just kidding. Oh, yeah, we do. Apologize. Kyle Preeman, 49% just between SC1 and SC2 this past summer is a great example. And this is something that you'll see among different offices. And when you look at Ben Jackson and Brian Hurlman, Matt King, Justin Donald, Dane Espigard, some of the best pushers, by the way, best office push performances, Drew, you look at these reports and push periods for many are 50 to 60%. Almost everybody, it's over 40% of their summer performance. It happens during push periods. And I think about for managers, do you understand the impact this has in your organization to really move the needle to the next level? Besides all the growth and how much I enjoy coaching these guys, what I love about pushes as a manager is that I have an excuse for two weeks to drive the hack out of my top guys, which most of these individuals, very easy to sell. Your best kids, they know the right people. They sell homemakers by sneezing, you know, like, oh yeah, whatever, you know. And they don't really work hard. They've never really had to work hard. And some of your kids, the best kids, they have the right connections. And as long as they see a couple of the right people, they'll outsell your entire team off of like five demos. And I love that during this time, it's not about a certain sales performance. It's about taking action and pushing yourself beyond what's comfortable. For two weeks, we will do five or more demos a day, at least five days a week. That's a commitment if you're going to be on the alliance, that you're working. You're going to, and that's for, for the higher alliance. You might have different alliances. But if you're on the 10K alliance, it's not about selling 10K. And that was a move I had to make some years ago because I had kids that could sell 10K off of 10 sales. Scott did that this summer. Literally, nine sales, $11,000 in sales. I said, Scott, next summer, I want to see you actually push. I want to see you push yourself. I want to see you work hard and show yourself that you can commit to something that's difficult and fight 
and fight through and make something incredible happen? How do you promote the push periods? How do your, how do your reps view the push? I always talk to my guys about it as a sports analogy. This is an easy way for you to get everybody tied in. I talk about season, season's coming, season's coming. Everybody knows that summer is our season, right? Football, fall is football season. Summer is vector season. By the way, we have a lot going on in the, non, in the off season. We have a lot of scrimmages. We have some competitions even, but summer is our season. So as we're leading up to it, me knowing that over 60% of my year is going to come in a three month period and over half of that will come just during those two pushes. That's all I'm talking about as we lead into the year. Our guys know right now, next year when we have season, we're going to kick off and we've got opening day and we have the the season opener, right, which the assistant managers will go out and push and lead the way. But we're gearing up for the playoffs. It's all about the playoffs. And so I have that promotion where it's the playoffs, the Super Bowl, and the Pro Bowl for SC1, SC2, SC3. That's what it's been in my office since 2007. And it's, the, the playoffs are coming. The playoffs are coming. And we talk about we want to make sure we have an incredible team when the playoffs come. What's going to happen? Uh, what we're going to create, what we're going to do during push. Right now, I got a message from my pilot yesterday. She sent me an email with everyone for next summer. She goes, I just, I, I really started thinking about, okay, what excites me? Because she's just been in a funk and doesn't want to work. She goes, I love the summer. I love push periods. We're about to tear some stuff up. She broke down SC1 push, all the guys we already have committed, the guys that she knows we can get committed but are not locked in yet. SC2, she goes, these three guys said they're traveling all summer. They're not going to work with Vector, but they'll help us for the Super Bowl because they want to make sure we take number one and they don't want to leave us high and dry. So I've got three guys who are not coming back to set, but they're coming back for the two weeks of the Super Bowl and they're going to bring it because they know we need our best players for the starting lineup. And we talk about that and we say, we're looking for our starting lineup. We're looking for the crew that's going to lead the way and help blank office be, have the best ever performance in blank city's history and really promoting that best ever. So are your kids excited about being part of a winning team? All right. For them, when they look at it like that, it's exciting. It's like, we've got the playoffs. We've got Super Bowl. By the way, if you do not have vacations planned yet, please plan properly around these. Any of you guys who are thinking, I'm a top performer. I could go out and compete. I could be one of the best. I want to earn the most. I want to win a scholarship. Any of you overachievers, make sure those dates are blocked off. Because imagine if a sports team went into playoffs and their key players weren't even there. Like, oh, my family has vacation. Like the quarterback was just like, oh yeah, I know it's the Super Bowl, but my wife and I had a trip planned. Would that happen? And they all laugh. I'm like, of course not. That's not happening here either. So make sure you have those dates. So my guys from when they're being selected in the beginning of the summer, they know when the playoffs are, they know when the Super Bowl, when they're in training. And I'm talking to the top 20%, anyone going for a 10K push. Like, hey, you do the right things. You're someone that might be selected to be part of our starting lineup. So I make it a very big thing to be part of our starting lineup. Who here would be excited about having 15 people produce over $200,000 in a two-week period? Raise your hand. We've had that happen multiple times, and again, this summer. And that's because we targeted those kids and got them ready for what was about to come and really made it exciting to be a part of the starting lineup and be a top performer. And I'll give you guys some stuff on that. What's your intensity? Your people are a reflection of you. Absolute reflection of you. I was talking to Karina Marquez, who, who runs Miami now, one of my, my children from back in the day. We were talking about this talk and last night she goes, you're just... You're just so intense. I just remember you were just always so intense when it came to pushes. I said, I love push periods. I love push periods. I work all summer to get my starting lineup ready to go so we could go out and absolutely crush it together. It is so fun. I love seeing those kids every morning. I love hearing the stories. I love guiding them through the time. It is so fun. And these are our future managers, our future leaders, our future assistant managers. Second, preparation. What are you doing to make sure you're preparing and getting ready before push happens? First thing, manager setup. Do you have all your goals for the push period? Do you have an airtight plan of how it's going to get done? When I look at my starting lineup, 
I look to see, okay, I want to plan my entire push goal. And I know it's not going to all be done by those people. Obviously, we're going to fuel it with recruiting. We're going to have some 10K fast starters in the mix. They're going to help make up for some of the guys that just have a tough push, okay? But I plan my push based on my starting lineup and the projections of what I feel they could do. So whatever they do is usually what our office will end up doing. And not that they do it all, but I'm like, I know this person could ship 20. This person could ship 10. These could ship 10. This one could ship 30. You know, and I, and I map it all out. And then again, not everyone's going to get there, but we're going to be fueling that. But do you have all your goals set? Do you have an airtight plan? Do you have PDI and team meetings? Do you have the themes planned ahead of time? This is stuff from Dan Cassetta uh, that I learned back in the day as well as I prepared to put together these big push periods. And I was always inspired by what he did with his team to really prepare people and create vision, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. 10K Alliance meetings, are those ready for each morning? Do you have copies of contests and thermometers all over the place? We have, I guess that goes with room setup. There's just stuff all over the room. When you walk in, you know something's different. You know something's happening. Number, the second thing I put here was momentum. All right, you're increasing recruiting efforts. As you're going into the push, all my RAs know, all my assistants know, everyone knows. We're three weeks from the playoffs. We've got to get a killer starting lineup. I need 10 more ridiculous people for my starting lineup. I'd like to have 15 more. Here's who we already have. Here's what we're looking for. What are we doing to get that done? And the next launch happens. I said, all right, from that class, we launched out, you know, 28 people. There was two I'd like to have on my lines. I need more, you know, and I'm very clear with them because I'm just pointing out whoever are the people that are the 10K fast start focus, which typically is one to three per class. Sometimes, you know, you could have four or five, especially in the summer, driving the PR program the right way. But people who are excited to work hard and see what they're made of. So we, we, are building momentum with increased recruiting efforts. And the second part of the momentum is your representatives. Are they building their lead base? So leading up into the push, it's making sure everyone's getting skills checked, making sure everybody is building their war chest. We can teach them to increase their average order later. If they're not amazing on the phone, they can lose some people. If they don't have people to call, they just sit there. That's not happening during my push. So we need to make sure we're building momentum and building that recommendation base so that they're ready to go. Third thing is PCs, skills checks. I do skills checks leading up to our push period. If it's existing representatives, I start three weeks out, uh, then two weeks out, then a week out. The guys I checked three weeks before, I'm checking them the weekend of, like close me, ask me for X, let me see your binder, let me see your set, whatever they have set up, and making sure that they are set up for success, that they will be maximizing their recommendations, that they're feeling super comfortable with their closing, they understand the whys behind their close, and they're, they're asking the right way, they're writing numbers down, they're asking for the order. You need to watch this. You will be blown away at how bad your people are. Even the guys that sell a lot, they're horrible with their skills. They just got in front of the right max, which is great. We did our job getting in front of the right max. But now as we develop high powered sales reps, it's very important that we take time to watch them and make them great at the basics. The entire business is built upon mastering the fundamentals. And when you master the fundamentals as a sales rep, as a manager, big things happen. Attack list is part of the PCs. Are you sitting down and going through everyone they could see? Who do they need to go back to and get recommendations from? Have you gone through their inside? I, I do a cell phone dump leading up to a push. Cell phone dump, three columns. First, people that you know uh, very well. Second, people you know of or they know of you. Third, people you don't know at all. Like you don't know their parents. These people's names are just in your phone. Everybody is on one of those three lists from their phone. They know them really well, the parents. They know of them or the parents know of them, or they do not know them at all. They met them at a party or a study group or whatever, and they've never met the people's family. So we do that, and we make sure they know how to contact all these people to see as many of them as possible. And we really sell seeing their best people the week before the push so they can multiply their best recommendations. I said, do you want one baller lady or do you want 20? Because if you see her this week and you tie her into what's about to go down, she could give you her whole cell phone and all the women she shafts with and goes to bunko thing and tennis and whatever, okay? So let's make it happen. During their PC, do you have their schedule fully mapped out? I personally, DVMs, this is something I actually did as a DM. I took it from, I think it was from Matt King, but 
We had a schedule for success, like a weekly schedule from an Excel sheet that has Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and we pre-made the push. And I put each morning, it says Alliance, and the time of, it's blocked off. There's dollar signs every two hours. Team meeting is blocked off in black. It says team meeting and then blocked off in black. Phone jam, and it's blocked off in black. Everything's blocked off. Why? So they don't put a demo there accidentally. Oh, I booked a demo. You can't book a demo, it's black. There's no space to write. So ahead of time, they know, boom, here's a maxed out schedule. This has 120 openings, okay? Now block off when you can't work. Block off, let's put your workouts in there. Let's put church, let's put date night, whatever you have going on. And let's see what a maxed out schedule looks for you. So we always do that ahead of time. And during the PCs the week prior, I say, take this home to your mom. Say, mom, I want to be part of the starting lineup for my team. We have a two week competition. The entire company competes just like any sports. We do it for two weeks. And, and I, I want to just go all out, but I, I don't want to neglect anything we have going on with the family. But if I'm going to be a part of this group, I have to turn this in beforehand to my boss so she knows exactly when I'm available and exactly when I can't work. And I tell my reps, you know what? The flexibility of this job is you get to make a schedule, but you need to make one. We're going to make one together. You're going to show it to your parents so they can sign off so that you don't go, oh, well, my mom just told me it's grandma's 80th birthday party. No, mom should have known last week and I'll call her. We said, mom, give me everything the family has going on for the next two weeks because I want to go have a big push. I want to represent my team and be on the starting lineup. I have to have my schedule done two weeks in advance and I'm not allowed to change it. And I'm very hardcore with them about that because again, I want to be able to hold them fully accountable. I do not want excuses at all when it comes to the push period. During the PCs, you need to set the right expectations, the law of averages, okay, and making sure they understand we will have great days, we will have average days, we will have very crappy days. Take pride in your actions. Celebrate making your calls every day. If you had planned on doing four demos that day and someone reschedules, you plan on doing four demos that day. So during that fourth demo time, we find one or you're working during that time. You don't go meet your friends at the bar or go meet mom for lunch during that time because your demo canceled. You are working from 10 to four. You are working from 10 to four. Is that understood? Okay, awesome. And I'm very glad, they know I love it. I said, hey, I'm gonna be a tough coach. If you're on my starting lineup, you will earn more in two weeks than most of your friends make all summer. You will thank me at the end. You will not like me during the process many times because I will hold you accountable. I wanna see you give your best, your very best at all times. Never give in mentality. And this goes with in the PC, are you setting the right expectations? We're about finishing strong. I remember hearing Mike say this years ago. It's like, you just finish. You, just, you have to finish all 40 demos. You just have to get it done. And it's about finishing what you started. I don't care what the results end up. Feel good that you committed to a certain number and you did it, even when things weren't panning out. And you never know what happens and just the miracles that happen at the end of push when you give it all you've got until the very end. So make sure they understand we're about the finish. We're not gonna give in. You will be a champion when you finish regardless because you did something that was so difficult. And you teach them not to fail. You can't fail if you gave everything you had until the last moment. You just can't. The problem is too many people give up early and they never get a chance to see what they're capable of. And it's easier to do that because then you don't have to say, Oh, well, it's not that I wasn't able. It's just like, I didn't try, you know? And you can blame it on that. And that's bull crap. We're all going to give everything we have and we're going to learn and we're going to grow through the process. And it's okay if you don't hit certain numbers. I don't want you to worry about the numbers. Those are going to be big, medium, small. They're going to be all over the place. I want you to take pride in waking up every day because you said you were going to, making your calls every day because you said you were going to, making your five calls before and after, and always looking to improve. What went well that day? What could have gone better? And look for constant and never-ending improvement. And just get in the habit of that because when you do that in your life, you're going to be pretty incredible at what you do. All day call day expectations. Make sure you're covering that in your PC, making sure they know those commitments. And again, those are blacked out in my schedule. So I'm like, this black part on Sunday, it's because we're here all day. And making sure they understand what's gonna happen, what it's gonna look like, uh, what's the objective of that, and what we wanna accomplish through that process and getting that week set up. We're gonna do it here together. 
Tell your parents to go to Saturday night church or early morning service because we're here from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. Lock reps in for the event. Make sure during your PC, you get them committed to SC1 or SC2. If they're committed to the event, that increases them actually finishing the push. If they're not committed to the event, they don't really have that skin in the game, like, oh, I'm not even gonna go. But if they know they're gonna be there in front of their peers with the group that's the divisional alliance representing, they're gonna work a lot harder. I put rooms set up, promotional materials leading up to the push, office looks and feels different, just make sure there's stuff around. We put, will you win a trophy? Will you be on stage? We put the push goal, you know, 300K push, just things all around, 100K week. Whatever you're promoting, you know, putting that all around on just papers. They're just printed out and they're just everywhere in all different color papers. I see people plaster their walls before. Whatever you want to do, uh, but just push stuff all over so that they see that. And lastly here I put uh, build, build value and excitement in team meetings leading up to it. I think about every single team meeting, and it's not just team meetings. This is also during training seminars, that constant promotion. Are you talking about what the push means? You know, a chance to really go out and see what's possible. It's a chance to step up and make a name for yourself. You know, some people are ultra competitive. Some people really like to stand out. So those of you really looking to hook up your resume, how sick would it be to say you were in the top 1% of the company or top 5% of the company that accomplished this? How crazy would it be to say you earned uh, two, three, four, five? By the way, our top performers will earn 10, 15, to $20,000 in income in two weeks. They always do. How crazy would it be to be a part of that group? Giving talk about personal development that they gained through that process or having someone share just the confidence and learning to be resilient no matter what. Why? You have to get the buy-in. And they need to know that every single rep makes a difference. That's another huge thing. No goose eggs. During this two-week period, I know some of you guys are not going to be part of the starting lineup. That does not mean you are not important. Actually, it is very important that we have every single person contributing. And whether your commitment is to do five demos a week or your commitment is seven or ten, whatever it is, guys, we need you to carry your role and we need you to rock your role and your commitment. And if there's ever a time you can do a little bit extra during these two weeks, this is the time I'm gonna ask you to throw in an extra demo or two if your schedule permits it. We really appreciate it. Our goal is to be number one, and the only way that's gonna happen is every single person on our team contributing to the mission. And yes, we're gonna have the guys who are the starting lineup leading the charge having these crazy reports, but your reports matter too. Every single person makes an impact. So can you set a contest for all your guys over $1,000 that they get into a drawing for a Starbucks gift card? You know, can you do something for your guys who are over $3,000 for the push where they win like a, you know, a dinner certificate? The guy's over $6,000. You know, maybe you all go for a bowling night, like a team night that you pay for. You know, but something cool to get it tied into a number uh, that they feel good about and, and that we can celebrate, you know, their contribution uh, to that two-week period. So do fun things like that with them. Uh, recognize always starting lineup. I used to have a slide during training and I would put whoever had already committed as we were leading up to the event and then I'd have lines with question marks and say we're looking for seven more people to be in our starting lineup. So I always had the exact number of people that I want on my starting lineup. Uh, I didn't have a chance to take a picture actually and put it up here. My division knows I made a poster before the season started. I did this, I remember back in 08 that led us to our biggest pushes so I did it each year and it said a summer season, summer 20, you know, 17 season. And it says opening day, the day that it is. And then it said playoffs, you know, and it has how many starting lineup, like the goal that we wanted, and then the sales goal for that. And then the next thing said, you know, uh, Pro Bowl and had the dates, or excuse me, uh, the Super Bowl. And then we had the Pro Bowl, but it had the amount of people we needed on our starting lineup. So I had 10 or 15 or 20 or 30, depending what it was. And it had the goal for that two week period. So they, by the way, that's, that's when I, where I run training, right under my TV, that poster's there all summer. I'm always referencing it. We're in interviews. We're like, as you guys can see, we're leading up to this right now. We're building our team and we're looking for some players who want to be on our starting lineup and help us represent as the number one team in the nation or as the number one team in uh, Sarasota history, whatever you're promoting, making sure there's always, you can always be a best ever. And that's something I always talk to my guys about and when they're running offices, 
Because so I've heard, and I remember being that manager when I first opened up or when I moved to Miami. So I can't compete for a silver cup or I can't do that. I can't promote that. That's good for them. They can promote being number one. You can promote having the best October ever in blank history, you know, in your city's history, in your street's history, in whatever you want to say. But it's like, hey, this will be the best ever performance off a bird road that this company has ever seen, all right? And they're like, yeah! They don't even know what that means, you know? They have no idea. They're just like, best ever! And they're so excited about being part of being the best ever, even if it's just like, in this building, we will be the best ever, all right? But it's all about your excitement, your passion, your enthusiasm, and your belief for being part of something that will be the best of some kind. So think about what is that for you? What can you rally people behind? But again, everybody's contributing. So promote them. And again, promotion of team role at least three weeks out. Have rallying points, best ever, a specific number. Maybe it's a team to beat. There's just a team. It's like take down blank office and you, and you pin up against another office and that's the rally cry is beating the Oak Brook office. Uh, so, and that was our rally cry, you know, years ago. Uh, it was like, all right, we got to beat Walnut. You know, like in car, I'm like, we got to beat Walnut. They're like, what the heck is Walnut? It's Walnut? Like that's an office? You know, we'd have fun with it. But Find a rally cry that excites you uh, so you can go after it. Uh, and constant, like I mentioned earlier, the constant sports analogies of at every function. So we had an assistant manager push just to kick momentum off into the summer. So the assistants knew right after finals, there was a two week push to set the stage uh, to provide examples of uh, big team performances, so or, or big push performances, excuse me, so that we could have nice paychecks right off the bat. It makes the assistant managers more excited because they earn money right off the bat, where we don't have a team yet, right, in May, that's producing these big numbers, but they go out and push during that time, so they're getting a paycheck, so it makes them a lot more positive, and they're an example to point to. So we did a season opener uh, the, in, in mid-May, for the assistant managers. Then we had SC1, which as I mentioned is the playoffs, SC2, the Super Bowl, and then CFC, uh, which is the Pro Bowl. So making sure again, that promotion is always there. And have fun with it. You guys can see on the slide on the bottom right, uh, we had a fun hat phone jam. I made everyone wear a fun hat. And we just do different themes. It's something that they didn't enjoy doing was making calls. And we would just laugh at some of the random stuff they had. You know, we went on Amazon and bought some random things. Like they have like all the, for, photo booths, and you can get like a whole bunch of random crap for like $15, you know, and it's just fun. So making it fun, having cool prizes, you know, during the phone jams, and to me this is part of preparation that, that goes with uh, the team meetings, but is, is are you set up for proper pushes during the team meeting, or phone jams during the team meeting? When they're walking, is the board set up for them? So they can put their countdowns, however you're going to do it. If you're running teams, and I really love team, and I'll, I'll talk about that with execution right now, uh, putting that together. So last point in my message, is, or the third part here, is the execution process. First, daily execution. Are you reviewing the game plan for each day, every morning with your people? You need to have morning contact with everybody everybody on the team. What's great about making that alliance is I love coming to the office. My alliances in the morning, every single morning this summer, there's at least 20 people sitting in front of me, sometimes up to 30. We invite the whole team, by the way, not just the alliance. The alliance knows they're expected to be there every day, but we always invite the team. We say, hey, by the way, we're going to be teaching on blank topic. We'd love for you to join us. If they didn't hit their goal for that day, their team leader's like, dude, come to alliance with me. Come check it out. And they invite their people to come in the morning and join them at the Alliance meeting to make sure that they get inspired, they make calls. And I'll tell you this, when those kids come once, they keep coming back. I had a kid who lived 45 minutes away. He said, Kat, I'm not gonna be able to come you know, every morning, but I'll come when I can, or I'll come on the team meeting morning. He came once and I saw him show up the next day and the next day I said, John, I thought you weren't gonna come in the mornings. He's like, I know, but it's been really good. I just, I, I like the energy of just being here than doing it on Skype. I was like, cool. All right, but I had told him, I said, hey, you can Skype in in the mornings. We live streamed uh, off of my Google Hangout so anybody could watch. 
uh, but really wanted to be able to impact everyone. But morning contact. So while they're phone jamming, guys, when your guys start making calls, now you're PDIing, you know, all your, your next key players, right? So you have your starting lineup, and then who's the next sub and Who are all the guys that can do, get on the newsletter that week, right? So it's the next newsletter crew that might not be working every day, five demos a day, but make sure, are you talking to all those guys, and, and are they talking to their people? So we actually, we split the team up into teams uh, during a push to really help with this process. So even when I, I didn't run teams year round, uh, we always, when push comes, we would split our alliance and we'd split them up into teams so they'd have like their, their partners and they'd each have you know five to seven people depending on the size of the team that they would be working with. So if we had 20 people on Alliance, we had seven teams. I usually did groups of three from the Alliance that were accountability partners, and then they'd each have like 10. So they'd split it up sometimes and they each talked to three people personally each day. I didn't care what they did, but they knew that their team needed to be spoken to and they knew what their team needed to produce for that week. And it was usually a number that was the goal of those three anyway, so everyone else was bonus. But I said, your goal is to make sure everyone on your team gets an order. Take them field training with you, and watch what happens, and getting them really excited about going out and doing the uh, field trainings. So daily motivation needs to happen every day. Uh, they need to, <laughs> I hear somebody like, you do motivation daily? I'm like, yeah. And I once read a, a quote that said something about, you know, they, uh, People, when people were talking about it, they say, well, you, I guess you don't need to shower daily, but I recommend you do. And just talking about like, just, it's just something that it's just good for you. You know, uh, you smell better, you look better, you're more excited, but just getting them refocused every single day uh, to make sure they're ready to go. Uh, part of the mini teams that's fun is the inter office competition and it's extra support for your representatives. So they really have a good time with it and being able to do if this team beats this team, they have to wash their cars. You know, and they just, they have a blast with it. So we're just, as the week's going by, it's like, hey, Team Blue, they just dropped a complete set. What's up, Team Red? And they're like, what? Oh no. You know, and they get excited. And they'll work harder to like beat each other, to not wash cars or not have to be their servant at whatever meeting or, you know, it's like silly stuff or pie in the face contest. You know, but they get all fired up and they work harder for the silliest things. So make it fun for them where they're competing with each other and the team Teams are competing with each other. And guys, uh, the last uh, thing I have here is encourage reps. Encourage your representatives. Understand that when you start the push, as you're leading up to the push, obviously everybody's excited. Everybody's stoked to be a part of what's about to go down, about creating history for a push period record in the blank area, and they're stoked about it. And then the push starts and they get smacked to the ground. They might get up, get smacked down again. And it's just such an emotional process and whether it's significant others, friends, no sales, no shows, whatever it is, they get discouraged. And they don't see the not, even though we told them ahead of time, and we have to constantly be pouring into them and sharing the proof and showing examples of how different push periods have Un unraveled by Friday or Saturday of the first week of the push most people are pretty much given they've given up on their original goal so it's really important that we take the time to sit with them and re-pour belief into them and show them what's possible and I show how people have had 20k weeks 30k weeks 40k weeks and really Show them the proof of that. And you have to keep telling them how much you believe in them. Taylor this summer wanted to break the national record. And then we talked about breaking the regional record. And regardless, she, she was not on pace after just a couple days. And I remember her just kind of disappearing on Wednesday during the day. I said, Tay, you are not going to give up because you don't think you can hit blank number anymore because you lost these couple days. I said, you committed to doing your best ever performance. You committed to working hard for two weeks. It's been a couple days, and I know you're not where you wanna be, but I am not gonna let you give up on yourself. I am not gonna let you quit. I, I'm really good at my job, and my job is to make sure your butt finishes what you started. <laughs> That's gonna happen. And she didn't have the push she wanted, but she won number one for SC2 and did over $40,000. 
And her parents, who were pretty nag on the job, were there taking videos, taking pictures, just so proud of what she had accomplished. And her dad had said before, this is just such a waste of time for you to be doing this. She had ran a branch the summer before and completely fallen on her face and not succeeded and just hadn't seen what she was capable of. She's excited to come back next summer and go after her biggest summer and get mentoring and coaching with some of our guys and put a team together to go after some big numbers. You have to explain the mental part of the push. Bad times as well as the good. You just don't quit. Focus them constantly on the effort that they're putting in, not just the results. They need to be encouraged to finish strong. It's half magic and it's half numbers. I heard that one said. All you can do is keep them focused on the numbers and keep sharing the vision of the magic that can happen. And I think about this next year, if you really start thinking about this now, as I mentioned the pilot, we already have SU1 and SU2 planned out right now for next year. We're ready, we're ready to dominate. We were looking at numbers that we should, we should do $1.5 million next summer. It's like, I think we could do more. This for this push, this for this push, and it's all centered around the pushes. The confidence your people gain when they go out and have those 10, 15, $20,000 reports, it's pretty incredible. And they feel so much more capable of what can happen. On the left here, on the top, was our SC1 limo night. Chavez was in the bathroom, so he missed the picture. He's in the middle on the one on the right. But we had almost every single one of our guys who was on the left, and two of them are receptionists, were at SC2, and we added a couple others who weren't there. Our core group, these individuals put up some big numbers, and it was just so exciting because through driving SC1, through what they learned, through the relationships they formed, and really building vision as to what this could do for them, why push, stand out, Create something great for yourself. Make a name. You want to land any job, any internship? You want to be impressive and earn a top spot to run your own business? We have the best entrepreneurship program in the world. In the world, hands down. Our branch program is out of this world. Our DM opportunity is the best starter job that you can have. And for some becomes a lifelong career that's unbelievable. The support you have, the systems that are in place, the belief that's poured into you, they start learning it during the push. If you can develop a great push culture in your organization, you will not only increase your sales performance and your sales results, but you will develop incredible leaders in your business, not just for that summer, but for the district you're building for years to come. Go rock your pushes this year.